So now we're going to be looking at computing limits. So the first thing I usually try to do is I plug in a value into the limit and just see if I get a number. Because that's the first premise is if I can plug in a number and it's continuous, um, then that will simply give me um, the answer that I'm looking for. Okay, so for, for one like this, I'm just going to plug in 1 into here. I'm going to do 1 squared plus 3 times 1 minus 5. And that's 1 plus 3, that's 4. 4 minus 5 is negative 1. Okay. And for this one, I'm also going to try plugging in 0. And when I'm going to get 0 plus 1 over 0 squared plus 3 times 0. And I'm going to get uh, 1 over 0. Now this is not defined. So our, our general answer is it does not exist. But sometimes teachers might ask you to say like, well, is it positive or negative infinity? And that's, that's a positive or negative infinity is not existence. It's just a different way we describe these non existence. So if I get something like this, because one divided by zero is non-existent because I cannot divide by one, I cannot divide by zero. And if you think about what division means, one divided by zero would tell you that one divided by zero would equal some number K that implies that one is equal to K times some number zero. Right, and nothing times zero can give you one, and that's why this is not defined. There is no number k that when I do k times zero, do it, will I get one? So, um, so like I was saying, is is a lot of times you say like, well, what kind of non-existence is it? Is it a uh, infinity or negative infinity? And for that, we have to look at what happens as I approach is left from the left and from the right. and see if they're equal to anything. Now from the right is actually pretty easy. This one is um, because the top numerator is going to be 1 when I plug in 0 from the right. 0 from the right means numbers that are slightly bigger than 0. So I, I envision this as a very tiny number like 0 .00001. And so this is like 1 plus a tiny number which is positive plus another tiny number that's positive. This is a positive number a positive zero, if you will, and that would be positive infinity. Oh, sorry, um, because one divided by a positive tiny number is a very big positive number. This one's a little trickier to do. If I do zero from the left, what I'm going to get is I'm going to get one. I'm going to get a positive number on the top. And what I get on the bottom is, well, this part's going to be positive and this part's going to be negative. But this one is going to be more negative than this one. Because one properties of, of small numbers, of numbers less than one, is that when I square them, they become even smaller. Like if I square one half, it becomes one fourth. And one fourth is smaller than one half. Or if I square one third, it's one ninth. One ninth is smaller than one third. So when I square whatever tiny number I put in here, it's positive, but it's smaller than this one here. So really the denominator is going to be negative here. And so this, is, this whole result is going to be the number 1 divided by a tiny, tiny uh, negative number is going to be a really big negative number. And because these two limits are different, we simply write the answer as does not exist. Okay. Now, keep in mind that even if this were positive infinity, the answer still doesn't exist. Okay, Existence of a limit is only for finite numbers. Infinity is not an existence, um, strictly speaking. But we do write the answer differently if they both happen to be positive infinity or negative infinity when I go from the left and the right. OK, let's look at number three here. Now, when I have a, what I do when I have um, quadratics like this is rather than plugging in right away as I factor. OK, so I'll make this limit as x approaches negative 1. And this factors into x plus 1, x plus 7 over x plus 1, x plus 5. I do that because it's easier to plug it in, and it also helps with the next step. So if I were to plug in negative 1 directly into here, I'm going to get 0 over 0. 0 over 0 is indeterminate. Indeterminate means that while technically 0 over 0 is not something I can do operationally, technically any answer will give me 0 divided by 0. Because if I think of it mathematically, it's 0 divided by 0 means equals some equals k. That's another way of saying 0 is equal to k times 0. And this is true for any value of k, actually. Remember, this equation is true for no value of k. 
And this is true for any value of k. So that's why we call this indeterminate. It's not that it doesn't necessarily exist. It may or may not exist. Indeterminate just means I can't tell um, because it could be any, it could be any uh, one of the values. And so the factored form helps us see what to do is we cancel this and then we plug in negative one. And this would mean uh, six divided by four, and that's three halves. Thanks for watching. If you're looking for more examples, go to my website. In there, I have free access to over 400 calculus questions that I solve and I show you step by step. So if you're interested in seeing more, please check out my website.